Hey everyone, it's Mark from Flight Sim School, and I'm back today with the second part of our traditional navigation series without the use of a GPS. And today we're going to fly the first part of the route that we planned in the last episode. If you haven't seen part one, no problem. You'll still be able to follow along so long as you understand how to tune to nav radios. But if you want a little bit more background or you wanna know how to plan your own non-GPS routes, make sure to check it out because it's gonna give you everything that you need and then some. Our flight plan goes from Torrance Northwest up to Oxnard. And for today, we're only going to be focusing on the first and second legs of the route, which are going to cover all of the core concepts that you need to understand for everything else in traditional navigation to make sense. So when we're navigating with VORs, you can really only do one of two things. You can either fly to a VOR or you can fly from a VOR. And our flight starts by going to the Santa Monica VOR on one course. And then once we get there, we're going to fly away from that same VOR on a different course that's going to take us towards our destination. To be able to do all of that, we're going to need to track the Santa Monica VOR. So I'm going to set its frequency into the standby for nav 1, and that is on 110.8. And I'm going to make it the active frequency since we're going to need it right away. That's going to let us capture the signal from the VOR, but we need to do one more thing to be able to navigate properly, and that's to tell it what course that we're going to fly. Now, if we had a GPS on board, it would tell us what course do we need to fly from the airport to the Santa Monica VOR. And on the map display, we'd see the straight magenta line from one point to the other, which represents our course across the ground that we need to fly. The HSI is similar in some respects because it's a top down view with the airplane in the middle and the moving yellow line shows us where our flight path is relative to the airplane. So it's very much like the magenta line in that sense. So we need to turn towards the yellow line to bring it back to the center and stay on course. The thing that's different with the HSI is that we have to figure out what course we're going to fly. Whereas with the GPS, it just always calculates and shows you the right course automatically. So on our chart, we have our first leg from Torrance up to Santa Monica with the pink dashed line, and we need to figure out what course that is. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the VOR. And from here, what I can do is look at the compass rows and just figure out approximately where our course line intersects with it. The easiest way to do that is to look at the closest airway to our flight path, which happens to be the blue one, which is right next to it. And where it intersects with the compass rows, if you zoom in enough, you're going to see that there's a course of 1 to 5 outbound from the VOR written on the chart. So I can extrapolate from that and say that our course line is probably on around 1 for 0 or just about. That brings us to the trickiest part of everything we're going to look at today, though. You always need to set your course relative to the direction that you want to fly. So 140 is what we'd use if we wanted to travel south from the VOR, but we are going to be traveling northwards towards it. So we need the opposite of 140, which is 320 instead. We can set that up now on the HSI by twisting the OBS knob until the arrow is pointing at 320. And with that done, we're pretty much ready to fly the first leg of the flight. The second leg of the flight is on the airway that goes west from the Santa Monica VOR, so we don't really need to configure anything else for it right away, because we're just going to reuse the NAV1 radio frequency, because it's still flying from Santa Monica, and we'll just tune it to a different course once we actually get to the VOR. That covers us for everything that we're going to be doing today. Normally, when I'm preparing a flight like this, I'll set up the first four radio frequencies that I'm going to need ahead of time so that once I'm in the air, I can focus on flying and navigating rather than having to fiddle with the radios. But to stay focused on our topics for today, I'm going to skip over that and I'll explain the rest of the pre-flight in the next video when we look at the second part of this flight. 
We're going to get flying in just a second, but I want to remind you to hit the like and subscribe so that you get the rest of this round gauge IFR series. We're going to be covering some more advanced topics in the weeks and months to come, so make sure that you don't miss out on any of that. And as usual, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask because I always do my best to answer everything that comes in. All throughout this flight, the main thing to keep an eye on is the HSI because it's the key to understanding where you are in the air and what you need to do to get on course. So anytime that I'm showing you a map of where the airplane is, compare it to what you see in the HSI so that you can start to get a grasp on how it works. Alright, I'm just getting underway now and one thing that I want to point out on the HSI is the red and white flag that we see just to the right of center. That's there because we're not picking up the signal from the VOR station yet, but as we're getting in the air, you're going to notice it's going to disappear. And that means that now we are picking up the signal for it and we can use the VOR to navigate properly. The yellow needle didn't budge very much though, and that's because our 320 course that we set before takeoff is pretty accurate. But as I continue to fly the runway heading, you'll notice it's going to start very slowly moving to the right, exactly like if we were flying away from the magenta line on the GPS. It's doing that because I'm on a heading of about 300 at the moment, but we told the HSI that we want to fly a course of 320 to the VOR, so we're flying away from our flight path right now. So to get back on course towards the VOR, it's just like looking top down at the map of the G1000. Our plane is in the middle, and our flight path is in yellow off to the right somewhere, and we need to turn the plane in that direction to get back on track. How much we need to turn is going to depend on how deflected the needle is, but since we're only a little bit off course at this point, I'll usually only turn about 15 to 20 degrees past the course that I'm trying to fly. So in this case, we're trying to get back to the 320 course, so I'll turn to about 340. So at this point, we're on an intercept course to get back on our yellow flight path, and we need to wait for it to start coming back towards the middle until it overlaps with the airplane, which is going to mean that we're right on top of the flight path that we want to be. And that can take anywhere between a couple of seconds to a few minutes. While we're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to use that time to introduce you to one last tricky concept, and that's the little triangle that's right at the center of the HSI, which is there to tell us what direction we're flying relative to the VOR. The VOR is in a fixed position on the ground, so depending on which course we've set by turning the OBS knob, we could either be flying towards it or away from it. And that's what the triangle is for. When it's pointing up, it's saying that we're on a course that's going to fly us to the VOR. And when it's pointing down, we're on a course that's going to take us away from the VOR. What that means for us right now is that our course needle is pointing at 320 and the triangle is pointing up, which means that if we stay on course with the airplane overlapped with our flight path, we're going to fly directly towards the VOR exactly like we're expecting. The other way that we can tell if we're flying to or from the VOR is by looking at the DME. So I'm going to bring it up on nav 1, and the distance to the station is going down as we can see, which of course means that we're getting closer and closer to the VOR. While I've been explaining all of that, our yellow flight path has been moving closer and closer to the center of the HSI where it's going to overlap with our plane. And at this point, I can start to turn back towards a heading of 320 so that my heading matches the course that we're trying to fly. That means that now we're traveling on our 320 course towards the Santa Monica VOR that we saw in the briefing. And so long as I keep the course centered in the HSI, we're going to fly directly to the VOR. We've got about seven more miles to go until we get to the VOR, so it's actually a good time to start looking at what we're going to do when we get there. And like we said in the briefing, we're going to be flying on the airway that runs west from it. Right at the beginning of the airway segment, if you zoom in, it's telling us that the airway runs on a course of 261 from the Santa Monica VOR, and that's what we're going to need to set on the HSI to fly to our next waypoint. 
All right, so we're within one nautical mile of the Santa Monica VOR now, and as we fly right over it, we're gonna start to lose its signal and enter something called the Cone of Confusion, which is where the yellow flight path needle can start to move left or right of center, but that's not because we're off course, and if you see that start to happen, you wanna just keep flying the heading that you're on. Eventually we're going to lose the signal from the VOR entirely as we fly right over it and when that happens the red and white flag is going to reappear and that's our cue to change the course and heading. And I'm going to start by turning to 261 first because I don't want to get too far off the course that we're trying to be on. And then I'm also going to twist the OBS knob to 261 as well so that the yellow arrow points at the course that we want to fly for that airway that we're trying to join. And like that, it's going to tell us once we roll out on 261 how far off course we are. Now that I've done that, we can actually see that our flight path is going to be somewhere to the left. So to get back on track, I'm going to do the same thing as we did on the previous leg. I'm going to turn an extra 20 to 30 degrees to the left so that I can fly towards our yellow flight path. And just like on the first leg, I'm going to stay on this heading to intercept it. And once the needle starts coming back towards the center, that's when we're going to start our turn back towards 261. All right, so when I flew this, I wasn't paying complete attention at this point, and look at what's happening in the HSI. Our flight path's moving from left to right, and it's just about to cross our airplane right in the middle on the 261 course that we told it that we want to fly. But I'm still flying on a heading of 230, so we're going to fly right by it and just keep going. So now I actually need to turn back in the other direction to get back on track. What I'll do then is set my heading to be about 280 and to save me some work I'm going to put the autopilot into high track mode which on newer airplanes will be called nav mode and like that it's going to take care of rolling out on course for me and it'll make any adjustments that are needed to keep me on the 261 course that I've set. It's also a good idea to double check a couple of things every time that you change course. First off, you always want to make sure that your heading and your course are generally pointing in the same direction. So the tip of our yellow needle is pointing at 261, which is the course for our airway, and we're just a couple of degrees off that heading now as well. The other thing to double check is that your to from flag is pointing in the direction that you're expecting. In this case, we're flying away from the Santa Monica VOR, so it's pointing down, and we can cross-check that with the DME as well, and the distance on that one is slowly creeping up, which again makes sense because we're getting further and further from the station. And with that done, we've pretty much successfully set ourselves up to fly away from the Santa Monica VOR on the 261 course. That's going to put us about halfway to our destination and we really covered the core concepts of flying to and from VORs today. So make sure that you practice this yourself a few times because it takes some time to sink in. And if you got to this point in the video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe on your way out. And we'll be back in just a few weeks to finish off this flight.